Hello, Mrs. Murder here. Oh, it's been two weeks. Can you believe it's been two weeks? I bet you wondered where I'd gone. This week, we are going to be reviewing or talking about or being introduced to Peter Tremaine's Sister Fidelma book, The Shakeshifter's Lair. First of all, I will say that between the two candles up there are all of my Sister Fidelma books. Peter Tremaine has 31. This is his 31st, and I'm not going to review them all as I did with Brother Cadfile because I've read them over the last 31 years. I don't know if he did more than, if I, he had more than one out when I started. He probably did. But any at any rate, I've been reading one a year. Whenever it comes out, I get it. And this is his latest one, and it's just out in Ireland. So I... I guess it came from Ireland. I've waited a long time for it. I just do it every year. And it's a superb whodunit. First, I wanted to start with some little comparison. While we still have Brother Cadfile, if you watch those Brother Cadfile reviews, you'll remember that I talked about how Peter Tremaine put the list of characters in the front of his books. And he still does that puts the list of characters in the front of the books. And and this one, going back as far as the Badger's Moon and in some of the earlier ones, but he didn't do it in this particular, the Shapeshifter's Lair. In this one, he has a historical note, which is one, two, three, four, which is uh, five pages, six pages goes to page eight and then he has a pronunciation guide so in the earlier books he had a pronunciation guide because the it's very complicated hidden vowels consonants the difference between the way a, a the way that the words are pronounced so all of my names all of everything is in my own head the way I pronounce them and the way I understand them when I read them but I didn't ever plan to be talking about them, so I didn't worry about whether I had the correct pronunciation. I did refer to it a lot at first, but now if I'm off, I'm off. And then we have a principal characters. So we have the pronunciation guide for uh, seven pages, I think. And then we have the principal characters. Then we have our maps and the map of changes of Ireland as we travel through this. now. Time period for uh, Sister Fidelma is in the 700s, and you'll remember Brother Cadfi was in the 1300s. So while writers and everything say, critics say that Sister Fidelma is a great follow up to Brother Cadfi, it seems funny because, the, because of the time disparity, Brother Cadfi being 1300s and but they're both in medieval medieval times. And Sister Fidelma is very different from Brother Cadfile. Brother Cadfile, it's about a cloister. You have the abbot. You have goings on in the abbey of St. Peter and St. Paul. Now and we have a different setting for Sister Fidelma. And the shapeshifter's lair is definitely different because she goes into an area where in her books... Maybe because it is the 700s. We are exposed to a lot of the beliefs of real ancient culture. And I had noticed that there's a, a Celtic class that's offered online. And I could learn all of this. But tell you the truth, after reading all the Brother Cadfile and Sister Fidelma, I think I'm going to try to get back up to present day and be more with my current language and responsibilities, but Sister Fidelma is, she's called the Dalag of the Court. She is the king's sister. There are a number of different kings, but the king of her area of, of um, so she's an advocate of the law courts of 7th century island, and what that means is we learn a lot about how the how laws were developed and how they were made in the seventh century 
they already had laws for women that, that, that women are fighting for today. That's very interesting. And, and for example, being able to inherit and not being the property of your husband and that, that came in later times. And her husband is uh, from South Folk of East Angles and he is her companion. He's called her companion, but they are legally married and it's different complicated rules and everything, but they're married and they have a son by this time. If you read all of the books, you find, you know, when she met him, then they have some mysteries they solve together, then they get married, then they have a son, and then uh, he's in his own right is, uh, has a great deal of scholarship in law and has, but she is the one with all the power and she is right now in this book, in the Shapeshifter's Lair, she's working as an advocate for the king. She's working for the king and has resigned her position as sister. So she's not living as a, a sister of the church anymore. She is now pursuing her legal responsibilities. And she is, because of her high, high, the high level of law that she has attained, the daylight of the courts, kings, anyone, she asks a question, they have to answer her. She does not have to sit in the, when she is in a room with the king, any of the kings. And she, she goes to inspect why, uh, to find out about a murder. She solves murders all over the kingdom whenever her brother sends her. This is a very, um, it isn't as complicated as it sounds. However, you do get into the mining of and mines and backcountry and um, a lot of horseback riding, unfortunately, because uh, Adolf does not like riding a horse. Sister Bredelma is very comfortable on a horse, but Brother Adolf is, is not. So we'll go on treks, and she goes with Enda, the, her brother's bodyguard, he goes with them and they run into trouble and trouble and more trouble. So you will enjoy reading this and pursuing any of these books and just jump in and read it even if you don't totally feel you're pronouncing the words correctly or if you feel that some of his volumes, and I don't think Badger Moon is one of them, but some of them have a glossary in the back that gives you definitions of, this has an epilogue, yeah, but there's no glossary of terms. So when they have a, a prayer or a greeting that's in Latin or in, or is not understandable by us, they would give us a definition. And this, this particular one doesn't have to, you doesn't, you don't have to feel though, as though you're reading a textbook it's a very fascinating, interesting, and moves right along mystery. You solve it. You see how they solve it. And you go along with them through intrigue and danger and up into the mountains and into the mines and searching for his, her brother's missing uh, betrothed. Pick it up. This one is, any of them are good, but this one is Shapeshifter's Lair. And you'll find out. I'm sure you've heard of shapeshifters before. So these are people who still believe that shapeshifters are around, are causing problems. And it's, it's interesting to see where some of our black art ideas come from. Because this is from all the way back to 7th century and before. So, uh, the next review from Mrs. Murder, and we'll review another book in hopefully a more uh, expedient time. I haven't selected which book. I've got so many recommendations, I just don't know where to turn. I have so many books to read. i got to get busy. Okay, get ready. Bye for now.